Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Rick Game Theatrical video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with the Z390 platform, which, as rumours have it, is the home to the 8-core Intel processor, which is supposed to take on the Ryzen 2000 series. Then we will move over to yet another piece of Intel news, and that is a deal which is taking place in China between Intel and the Chinese tech company. Xinhua Unigroup and this deal could have large ramifications throughout the memory market and possibly bring down prices then we're going to move over to the best piece of news ever everyone's excited and everyone will be happy particularly gamers because there is a GTX 1080 Ti or Ti if you prefer which is specifically aimed at the mining market so doesn't that just give you a warm and fuzzy feeling but we'll start things out as I said with the Z390 I'm going to give you a too long didn't read of the current state of the CPU market. Of course, for the high end, you have the X299 for Intel, which comprises a variety of Skylake X processors up to and including 16 and 18 cores. And we also have from AMD, of course, the Threadripper series for the X399 platform. And then in the next month or so we'll see AM4 be refreshed by the X400 series and more specifically Ryzen 2000 series and Intel are currently fighting them off with Coffee Lake which is for the higher end SKUs 6 cores 12 threads on the Z370 platform but one of the persistent rumors from Intel is we will be seeing the Z390 being released at some point in the not too distant future. Now, the rumors have it that the Z390 would be unveiled in summer, possibly around Computex, but honestly, a lot of the excitement had somewhat died down because we haven't really seen that many leaks recently until now. So, AD64 have uh, had a changelog, and it is for version, and this is a pretty long version name, 5.95.45. 6, 9 beta which is dated the 9th of March 2018 now this has been spotted by videocards.com and specifically we will see and I quote motherboard specific sensor info for MSI B360 H310 H370 and drum roll Z390 series Taking AMD out of the equation for just a moment and the Ryzen 2000 series, which once again, of course, is based on the Zen Plus architecture, which is a slight die shrink from 14nm down to 12nm. Intel's strategy is just a bit weird because the X299 launched with a couple of chips, which I said at the time was pretty redundant, the i5 76 40X and the i7 7740X. There were, of course, four cores with no additional threads for the i5 76 and for the i7 it was four cores, eight threads, but it just seemed a bit pointless. Like, why would you even buy that? Now, with the uh, Coffee Lake six cores, you've got the i7 7800X, which is pretty much rendered, mm, I wouldn't say completely pointless because there are a couple of benefits for the HEDT platform, but most folks are just simply not going to really want to go there. So now, if you go with 8 cores for Intel, well, it just means that their HEDT offerings on the higher end become somewhat more odd. There were a couple of important quotes from various um, board partners which had given us some insight. One did hint that there would indeed be an 8-core processor in Intel's future, but since then we've not really heard much. So what exactly is the Z390? Yeah, what is the Z390 going to bring? Well, possibly we'll see USB 3.1 Generation 2 support, but the eighth generation from Intel is really weird because you have a Kaby Lake refresh, Coffee Lake, and Canon Lake, each essentially being marketed as the eighth generation. For example, Kaby Lake is along with the ride with Vega for the various. Um, APUs which which uh, Intel have released and it's all a bit weird because I do feel that if you boil it down to simplicity one of the key benefits uh, AMD have and this is actually saying something given how crazy their own uh, SKU offerings were just a couple of years ago but one of the benefits uh, AMD have right now is not only is there a clear 
product separation that uh, AMD have, but on top of that, while I wouldn't call from at least the rumours and the information we've got of the Ryzen 2000 series, while I wouldn't call them insanely improved, but there is a nice IPC gain there, there is a clock speed gain. For example, we've had the uh, Ryzen 7 2700 uh, X, which seems to be running at 4.35 gigahertz. That's a healthy clock speed bump over the previous generation. And furthermore, uh, AMD have actually simplified the lineup even further. For example, there's not going to be a 2800X. So it, it's going to be really curious over the next six months how Intel are going to be countering this. And I suspect they will. I don't think they're just going to be resting on their laurels. Finally, on the Intel side of things anyway, the Chinese government are having none of the stranglehold, I suppose, that the Korean memory manufacturers have over NAND slash memory supply. And so what they have uh, decided is that they are aiming for at least 70% of self-sufficiency when it comes to semiconductor supply, and that is uh, being aimed for 2025. One of the things that China has in abundance is capital, funds, money, moolah dollars, bucks, you get where I'm going with this, and so they've decided to invest 24 billion uh, dollars, which is quite a healthy amount. So what is happening is Intel are set to deliver a intrinsic part into this by partnering, and I'm possibly going to pronounce this incorrectly, uh, Singhua Unigroup, that is T-S-I-N-G U H-U-A, excuse me, so T-S-I-N-G H-U-A Unigroup. And they will be delivering, Intel that is, 64 layer 3D NAND flash memory. And this flash memory will be instrumental in producing certain components, for example, SSDs. So it's actually rather interesting because the South Korean markets are already uh, starting to respond to this. And there's a website by the name of businesscareer.co.kr. I'll link it in the video description. And they are already predicting that there's a good possibility that memory prices can plummet. I'll read the quote. Samsung Electronic and SK Hynix are said to be paying attention to the possibility that market conditions can be worse due to the competitor's NAND explosion. This can add weight to the argument that global investment in banking industry that the price of NAND chips would plummet. Actually, the keyword was plunge, not plummet, but pretty much the same thing. I feel most of you know this, but memory prices in 2017 went up exorbitantly. And over the past couple of years, we've seen prices absolutely skyrocket. In 2017 alone, there was about a 50% price raise. And it's kind of funny because if you actually look at the amount of RAM that people have in the systems now, it's not really gone up. And it's not because requirements haven't increased necessarily. It's just that, well, it's kind of expensive. There has already been analysis done and research done. Uh, some of this was conducted by DRAM Exchange, which act as a research division of TrendForce. They predict that we're going to be seeing a 5% increase in cost for the first quarter of 2018. But companies such as Samsung, SK Hynix, Micron, and so on and so on, are trying to increase production capacity. Um, and why is the prices going up? Well, it's for everything. I mean, servers cloud servers, GPUs with mining, SSDs are becoming more prevalent, mobile phones, I mean, I've used this example a lot before, but not only now do mobile phones have considerably more storage and RAM than what they did, let's say, two, three, or four years ago, certainly, but there's another thing. Emerging markets are now actually getting smartphones, so you are going from the situation where a whole bunch of people, like millions, billions of people didn't really have a smartphone to now those individuals at least have a basic smartphone because prices of the rest of the components have gone down so much. So essentially those individuals, and I'm not criticizing them for it, obviously more power to them, but it is still increasing the demand for memory. So what's the long and short of this then? Are we screwed? Uh, in the short term, prices are definitely going to go up. However, I think at least according to the research data, prices are probably going to start to stagnate and then finally start to fall unless there's an unprecedented, unprecedented if I can speak again, demand um, that wasn't predicted by the market. But I think we're probably going to start to see prices start to stabilise and no longer start skyrocketing like double-digit percentage per quarter at the very least. So 
maybe we'll see a small rise for like the next six months or so, but possibly, particularly if this deal goes through and the Chinese government continue to really press this, which I feel they will because obviously the Chinese government want to be as self-sufficient as possible, then possibly we will see the prices of this stuff start to diminish, which is obviously really good. Now, let's move over to the negative news, or the positive news, depending on your perspective, I suppose. So if you're a PC gamer, without a question, picking up a graphics card has been the bane of your existence recently, and unfortunately, it's not going to be getting any better. And there is a link that's currently going around, uh, originated from Inno3D, and has been picked up by a crypto mining blog that tells us that there is a new mining-specific GPU that is going to be released and it is based on the NVIDIA P102 100 uh, series cores. So what exactly is this? Well first of all the best way of describing it is a GTX 1080 Ti but severely cut down. So the first thing to take the axe is the number of CUDA cores whereas the Ti or TI if you prefer has 3584 CUDA cores and 11 gigabytes of GDDR5X memory. The P102 100 core and graphics card has only 3200 CUDA cores and 5 gigabytes of GDDR5X memory. As for other specifications, the base clock is 1582 uh, MHz, the memory clock runs at 11 GBPS, once again it's got 5 gigabytes of RAM, uh, and this is on a memory interface of 320 bit. So this means you've still got plenty of memory bandwidth, 400 gigabytes per second, two PCIe 8 pin power connections are required, max TDP of 250 watts, but that performance is still enough to net you with an Ethereum of a hash rate of 47 MHS, a ZEC 660 uh, souls and XMR at 879. Of course these are from uh, in O3D and have been stated for reference only, so it's possible that when they're in the hands of miners who can tweak the card and that type of thing, then numbers may be a bit different. So there's a couple of things that we immediately need to take into consideration. The first is that there is absolutely no video output at all. Not too surprising for miners. So what this basically means is that this cannot double as a graphics card of any description. And even if you could, would you really want to buy a GTX 1080 Ti, essentially, that, never mind the CUDA cores that are cut, but only with 5 gigabytes of memory. It's not really enough, let's just face it. The second issue is it has no backplate, and more to the point, it has no back plane. So not only is overclocking going to be somewhat limited, but you also have no way to mount it necessarily. So you're either going to have to be rather inventive, or you're going to have to buy that as an optional extra. Ouch. You might recall that there were some rumours that GP102 is going to be going on EOL, end of line, but that's not necessarily true or false based upon these. I mean, there's probably a smorgasbord, of course, that have already been produced, and even if you were to consider the fact that it is end of line, there's also probably a large number of those cores which are basically not up to snuff. In other words, they don't have all of the CUDA cores which can run, so what they can do though is operate at these diminished specifications with only 3200 CUDA cores enabled. The biggest issue, well there's a couple of issues, the first is that this has absolutely no retail value really outside of cryptocurrency. So if you buy this card, which is going to cost you 800 US dollars by the way, which is an awful lot of cash, you're probably not really going to want to use it for gaming, and that's putting it mildly, because let's just be silly just for the sake of argument, then let's say that you could solder on, you can't, but you know, let's just say you could solder on the requisite DVI, HDMI, or whatever ports to this damn thing. A, you've only got 5 gigabytes of GDDR5X memory, so that's a problem, and B, it's not going to be a full GTX 1080 tie anyway. So retail value when it comes to selling it on eBay is basically you put. So if the cryptocurrency market does crash, essentially you've got yourself a paperweight. I guess it could possibly be used for other compute orientated functions and therefore maybe video editing or rendering that type of thing could possibly get some mileage out of it. But it's an awful lot of money and you could probably do much better quite easily for those things once again the fact you've only got five gigabytes of memory is definitely going to be crippling i'll be curious to see if nvidia actually sanctioned this or not the only positive i could see out of this 
is if in the future NVIDIA release a range of cards kind of like this, which are, for lack of a better word, cut down gaming orientated versions, but specifically they might have a slightly different BIOS and perhaps have been modded some way or another on the core, which basically means that they're designed specifically for mining but they've been cut down or and or altered so they don't cannibalize necessarily uh, gaming sales but how that's going to work in reality i don't know obviously we did hear about uh, nvidia are going to release a couple of different uh, series of cards in the future but we don't know really what's going to happen from nvidia and whether we are ever going to see you know, uh, a simultaneous release, one aimed at gaming and one aimed at cryptocurrency. It's just a bit curious. And frankly, I think until the cryptocurrency craze either diminishes or we see an increase in the number of cards available on the market, and a lot of this, by the way, is down to limitations of memory. Plus, I do feel that in some instances, you've got uh, the simple fact of the matter that even if they were to double or treble the number of cards which were produced, it'd still be a shortage. I actually spoke to one AIB, this is uh, a while back, and he said that, uh, this is not even a joke, that uh, he was working with some shops, obviously, to provide them cards and all of that stuff, and he said basically that they were selling them not by... A two or three cards or four cards or five cards but in some cases there were literally truckloads of cards so there were miners would quite literally be filling up their cars with like graphics cards so obviously if you're doing that you've bought you're buying so many of them you can kind of get where i'm going with this but anyway hopefully you have enjoyed the video i'll see you soon take care bye for now